Hi, and welcome to today's video. Now, I want to start with some anecdotes. A couple of funny things that happened, uh, just to make you laugh. You can laugh at my expense, that's all right. Um, the first one was last night. Now, the window of my bedroom looks out onto the drive, but not onto the road. The road is around the corner, the side of the house. So the drive comes down off the road and, and across the front of our house, our house is sideways. Um, but the it was dark and there's no lights because we are rural. There's no lights outside our house. There's no lights until the street lights start a little bit way down the road. So if there's any lights, they really do shine brightly. Now, it's dark, it's night time, I'm in bed and sleep, not asleep, and the um, I see some flashing lights uh, shining through the curtains, like police car lights. No sirens, no noise, just the flashing lights. Now, I thought, oh heck, has, has a police car come down the drive? Because the, ga the gates were open that night. So I got up to have a look, but yeah, I forgot that I didn't have a left foot. It's the first time I've ever done this. And instead of, um, I swung my foot feet round to stand up and instead of doing that, I just slipped off the bed sideways and ended up on the ground thinking, shit. And what a dumbass. So I was laughing at myself and shit, all at the same time. <laughs> now I hadn't fallen from much of a height and I was just sitting on the ground thinking, oh bugger. Um, but if you're, if um, an amputated leg gets any type of knock, it sends the um, nerve endings crazy for for a few minutes. So it's absolutely inexplainably sore, um, way sore than it than you it actually should be for the knock you've given it. But then it calms down after a while. So I'm going, ow, ow, shit, shit, you stupid ass, all at the same time while sitting on the floor beside the bed. But do you know what the best bit is? The police car was not even down the drive. Police car was out on the main road and I'd pulled somebody over that was going past the house. So I fell out of bed for no reason. <sighs> and the other thing that happened was today. Now, I am quite motivated by goal by uh, goals I can achieve, um, but I'll come back to that later. And the swim challenge that I was entered into in December, I joined it on the 12th of December because that's when I was allowed to swim again post-op. And the swim challenge will be going on for the whole of December and it auto updates from your Garmin into uh, the challenge leader, leaders board. So you can't fiddle it um, because it goes off your Garmin data. Um, so I started um, 12 days behind everybody else and had some catching up to do. But I like swimming and it was a good motivator to get me back into the pool again, having not been able to swim consistently for almost a year. So... I got to the end of December and was in third place, just 9,000 metres behind the leader and only 1,500 metres behind second place. And I clocked up in those last two weeks of December, 30,000 metres. Yeah, I'm very motivated by goals. Now, what's the funny thing I'm about to tell you? Well, the person who I picked to third place started the thing again in January. I was like, oh, I was looking forward to a bit of a rest. But no. So I'm entered into it in January and guess what? Yeah, I've probably got a target on my butt. Um, and I'm the only person in that gets entered into this challenge that did a swim on New Year's Day. Now, the challenge was started on the 2nd of January, but it but the Garmin date is taken from the whole month. So I'm instantly at the top of the leaderboard because I'm the only person that went for a swim. It was only 1,400 metres. But anyway, so the person that was in fourth place before, who's created this challenge, looks and goes, right, I'm off to the pool. And I thought, Ugh. so they're all going to be chasing me for the whole month. So I worked out, after she'd been to the pool, I worked out how far I had to swim to get the lead back again. And went to the pool. Now, I was only going to do 2,000 metres, but it ended up having to be a bit more. So... I swamp her down, swamp her down. Now the pool's got is open for um shortened hours during the holiday period until Tuesday when it goes back to its normal hours. So it shuts at five. Now I went down at about three, three thirty, and I didn't really think of the time at all. I was just motivated by the watch and how far I'd gone. Now I was trying to work out what swimming up and down. Luckily, the watch calculates how many lengths I've done, thank God. And I was swimming up and down, trying to work out how far I had to go to get ahead of her, how far I had to go to get a thousand meters ahead of her, and all this sort of thing. And I thought I'd worked it out. Um 
to be a certain amount and I'm swimming up and down my mail business and then I look at my watch and I've got 100, 200 meters to go and I look up at the clock and it's five to closing time. It's like, oh! I hadn't even noticed there was no one in the pool. So I looked quickly around to see if there was two kids still jumping in. So I thought, okay, I'll do another 100 meters. I thought it might be pushing it for another 200, but another four lengths, four, two, another 100 meters, that's fine. So I was only 100 meters short of the... Um, time that I was the amount I was hoping to do but then I got shimmied out of the uh, pool and I did the fastest disabled changing room change I have ever done and brushed my hair in the car <laughs> and was out of the changing rooms and out of the pool faster than the kids that were still jumping in so that was quite an achievement for somebody with one leg and to finish it all off nicely I got the leadership back the leader back uh, the lead back in the swim challenge but I'm sure it won't be for long Anyway, that's what happened to me today. But what I want to talk to you actually for about is how I managed to be so motivated despite being an amputee and one that was not, uh, and, and might be an elective amputee, but I was an amputee that was not expecting to be an amputee. And how do I stay so positive and motivated? That's what I want to talk to you about today. So there are three things, there was lots of things that motivate me, but the three main ones, when I thought about it, I'm going to talk about now. So the they are, starting in no particular order, people that tell me I can't, although this is probably my biggest motivator, people that tell me I can't. So for example, when I was younger, like 15 odd years ago, 15, 20 years ago, I was told women don't ride motorbikes. Well, do they not? So I got a bike license and bought a, um, a racing bike. No, uh, a sports bike, that's what I mean. Because somebody told me that, I, that women don't do that. I became a rugby referee because women didn't do that either. It's quite commonplace now, but it was not when I was in my 20s and 30s. So I went and did that as well. That's the sort of thing that motivates me. So what has motivated me being an amputee when I didn't even want to be an amputee? And that is people telling me I can't. So, for example, I entered Challenge Monica in February, uh, just about the time, if not just slightly before, the time that I had the amputation. I told the surgeon I was going to do this. I have been told three times since that I'm not going to make it and that I should cancel it. And all of those people I've said, Okay, and I w and I've got to say I was quite concerned when I had the staph infection and how much delay it was putting on my swimming. But I did know that I could go into the pool a couple of times and knock out two thousand meters because I had done it previously in between two other surgeries. So I was not that worried. But if I was still banned from swimming in January, then I was going to have to start thinking of a plan B, like ignore them and go anywhere with a waterproof dressing but anyway it didn't come to that so I um was told that I wouldn't be able to do the, the race so I'm bloody well going to and I spoke to the race organizers and we have come up with multiple plans I've been down to the site and I've come up with multiple plans plans for getting in and out with a leg without a leg um and with with the help that I'm allowed to have and all that sort of thing and I will do the goddamn race and I will just go net, 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 to all those people that said I can't and hopefully motivate some along the way. The second thing that motivates me quite well, as you probably already worked out, ah, the cat is stacking his claws in my leg. Um, the second thing that motivates me uh, is statistics. So how does that work? Well, I... Um, look to see what type of statistics I needed to be able to get on the age group um, triathlon team for great, to represent Great Britain. Um, age group is the level below elite and above your average job logs, uh, you know, Sunday, fun day sort of person. Um, and you need to qualify and be in the top so, so many uh, qualifying races in your country. And it's different for each country. So I worked out how fast I had to be at the swim, how fast I had to be at the bike, and how fast I had to be at the run. I had swimming lessons. I looked at the technique closely. I had uh, got a coach, and it also got a running coach because I needed to target all three, not just any one of them. 
it worked. I was on the age group racing team for five years before the knee replacement injury thingy started going off on me. Now I'm on a different research tangent to see what I can do in the para type of field, but it is slightly different because there is not an age group level. Para triathlon is now in the Olympics and I'm not at that level because of my age for a start. Um, so I'm gonna have to work out what I can do instead at para level, um, but don't you worry. I'll be looking at some statistics and I'll figure out a goal in that regard. And the third is goals that are just a tiny bit outside of my reach. Now, I don't like great big grand fanciful goals that absolutely are 10 years away. I just can't connect with those. But things that are just slightly, seem just slightly impossible, I quite like those sorts of goals. So, for example, the swimming challenge. Now, I know I can swim. Whether I can swim the same volume as everybody else is another question, but I know I can swim. So, I was very motivated by the swim challenge and already have been and went to the pool and did three and a half K today instead of two. But I'm also in a steps challenge, which absolutely doesn't motivate me at all because it's not something I can be competitive at. Uh, my steps are reliant on whether I've got a leg or not, how tired I am or not, whether I can um, stand up stand up on crutches or not. Um, I'm not sure if steps count if you're in a wheelchair. And it just doesn't motivate me at all. And I'm somewhere down at the bottom of the table uh, because I just can't be competitive. That's not something that I can influence. So I'm just not interested. So that's how it works with statistics for me. Um, if I can do it, and if it's something that's just it's out of my reach and I've worked out the statistics and the scientific way of getting there, then that motivates me. So I also need to talk about the demotivators. Um, what demotivates me? Unachievable goals, like I said, with this the steps challenge for, for January. There's no way that I can be competitive at that. So I'm just totally not interested. That just doesn't interest me at all. Um, things that I just can't achieve. So I'm, I've got no control over how fast I will be able to get walking. I've got no control over how fast I can get the prosthetic leg fitting and made and back to me. I've got no control over that. So uh, there is no motivation for me to go walking or anything like that at all because it's not something I can control at all. I'm only motivated by things that I can control and things I can challenge myself at. And the biggest one, which has been the biggest challenge for me all along, is large influential things that have been outside of my control, like the leg. So I tried my damnedest to do everything to combat um, all of the pain and try and get the collateral blood flow flowing and try and um, work like they told me to, to try and keep the blood flow and to try and keep the foot. I worked my ass off to try that, but I got to a point where I thought, do you know what? It's just making no difference and there's nothing I can do about this and things that are out of my influence. So when they said I couldn't swim to begin with, I, I was just like devastated. Then I worked out a way of cycling with one leg it was not very um, motivating for me. I did not like it at all because it's really hard and puts too much stress on my right knee, the knee replacement. So as soon as I was able to swim, I stopped doing that. Um, so yes, I need to be motivated by things that I can control and that I can change and that I can make happen. And I get very demotivated if there are grand things outside of my control, like the fact I couldn't cycle because of the pain. I couldn't walk because of the pain and I couldn't swim eventually because of the pain. Um, so that just completely devo demotivated me. It did a lot of damage to my mental health and I ended up sitting on the couch and gaining lots of weight because it was all stuff that I was just like, Do you know what, I give up. I give up because I can't change it. It's not necessarily a good thing and I have combated it in the end and it's something I really need to work hard at so it doesn't overcome me. But that is the things that demotivate me. So and I'm very clear on which are which. And as soon as I'm given some control back, bingo, I'm off, as you have seen. Uh, so the key for you for being able to make 2021 an awesome year on the back of the other day when I was talking about goals is knowing what motivates you and knowing what demotivates you and 
knowing what you can do about it. Thank you.